Welcome to my top 10 countdown of the worst episodes of Steven Universe Season 1. Now since I'm going to be antagonizing Steven Universe, I think we're due for an avatar change. How did I get roped into this? By mistakenly challenging the private to Trivial Pursuit, the anime edition. Now, Steven Universe is a really fun show, but man has it had its fair share of turkeys in Season 1. So let's get started with number 10, Frybo. This episode involves Steven hanging out with his friend Petey and turning a dorky mascot costume into a rampaging monster using a gem shard. So, a typical Tuesday. Now, the problem isn't Frybo. He's a neat little monster, especially when he turns into a complete freak show. And how he's defeated, i.e. by an army of random clothing items, is the kind of dorky brilliance that characterizes Steven. The problem is this weirdly long aside involving Petey, who we aren't terribly familiar with at this point in the season. He's moping about his daddy issues, and not in a funny way. This little drama doesn't work because Petey's not really a very visible or even entertaining side character. It's like they want me to care about the guy without building the likability factor first. The other big issue I have with Frybo is that Steven is really dumb. The whole crisis could have been avoided if he would have just listened to Pearl. But no, he completely zones out. I also have a couple of small issues with the episode. Namely, Steven needing to rock his birthday suit into battle. When stopping at the tidy whities would have still gotten the joke across. Even if it did set up Pearl for one heck of an ending zinger. Speaking of, I also didn't like Pearl getting taken out by ketchup. Even though we've clearly seen she knows how to cut the mustard. Private, that was friggin' terrible. Number 9. So Many Birthdays. I put this one fairly low on the list, because in a lot of ways, it's a good episode. It's funny with a lot of hilarious interactions between the Crystal Gems. But it's got the bad habit that a lot of Steven Universe episodes fall into. It tries to manufacture emotions. The story is Steven is suffering from rapid aging and is in danger of dropping dead. But the thing is, they're not going to kill Steven. Now, Steven Universe is a very brave and extremely daring show, and its willingness to take risks puts other shows to shame. They might kill any of the side characters. They might kill Amethyst, Garnet, or Pearl, but they will not kill Steven. And even if it looks like it, they won't commit. And in the ending of So Many Birthdays, they just sell the hell out of Steven dying. Amethyst is freaking, Pearl is crying like Fluttershy at a public speaking engagement. Or a slaughterhouse. And even Garnet loses her cool. Number 8. Lars and the Cool Kids. Look, I don't like Lars. And even this episode, which shows one of the few times when he isn't a complete jerk, it's still too little, too late. He spends so long just being the worst, mean-spirited wannabe. And the absolute icing on the cake is when he takes a shot at Steven's mom. Seriously uncool. I think the point was Lars was trying to get into a group by being a jerk, but they liked genuine, honest Steven better. But you know what? This group is not that cool. They're all wannabes. I found all three cool kids really insufferable, and I almost wanted the magic moss they tried swimming in to finish eating them. Uh, that's what moss does, right? No, but then this is magic moss we're dealing with. Number 7. Onion Trade One day, Steven loses one of his vending machine action figures. And to get a replacement, he must trade gem technology to a sinister figure haunting Beach City. Namely, Onion. What the heck is this kid's deal? He hangs around all day committing crimes. He's not visually consistent with the other human characters, except maybe his dad Yellowtail. Now, I've heard an interesting theory that he's actually the gem homeworld commander Yellow Diamond in disguise. Private, you really shouldn't believe what you read on Keep Beach City Weird. And he never gets punished for anything. Okay, this is another episode where Steven is really dumb. And no, Pearl pointing out how he should have handled his problem does not make it work. Also, why does the guy's machine only have Dave Guy figures? The biggest failure of the episode is its plot. Characters act in strange ways, and events conspire to lead to the climactic final battle between Onion and the Crystal Gems. Also, GUYS is an acronym for GUYS UNDER YOUR SUPERVISION. They use the word the acronym makes in the acronym itself. What the f Number 6. Alone Together. You know, I think Cheerilee can sum up this episode for me. Well, this has been... strange. Yep. 
but I would also add awkward. Basically, Steven is trying to work on the gem fusion power, but can't quite get the hang of it. Until he accidentally fuses with Connie, and hijinks ensue. I don't like this episode for a number of reasons, but mostly because I don't see the point. If the goal is to explain the fusion power better, we get a far superior explanation in the season finale. If it's to show that half gems and humans can fuse, well, mission accomplished, I guess. But I don't see how that's useful for fighting monsters or anything, really. If it's to give new insight into Steven and Connie's character or relationship, well, what do we really learn? That they like each other? Okay. We knew that. That Connie is socially awkward? We knew that, too. That Steven's powers are bizarre and unpredictable? Yeah, the show got that across a long time ago. If Alone Together is just an entertaining aside, I can't get it on that level either. It's so focused on the drama, it's not funny. It's set in Beach City, so there are no new locations. And as far as fusions go, Stevani's just a lame version of Korra. Set without the elemental foo. Exactly. Number five, political power. This episode has a good concept, at least. Why do we lie to the people we care about? Basically, in the episode, when preparing to fight Peridot, Pearl knocks out power and communications to Beach City. And Steven has to help Mayor Dewey calm the people so no riots break out. You mean help the mayor cover his... Uh, yeah, pretty much. This episode is both a lore fail and a character fail. First off, the mayor says he can't control what happens in people's lives. Which is true enough. But one thing he can at least influence is the power. Even though the crystal gems work by magic, the power grid doesn't. People built it, people maintain it, and people can fix it. The mayor may not have a working phone, but he has a working van, I guess it was made during the 70s or something. So all he needs to do is just drive to a town with power and start fixing Beach City. Now for the character problems. The biggest one is that the crystal gems come off as really callous in this episode. The whole town is without power, it's completely their fault, and they don't give a crap. Now you could argue that they've got bigger peridot shaped problems, but they still have time to just sit around and play cards with Steven. The second smaller problem is Mayor Dewey lying to the people, which I understand, you know, with politics and all. But Steven tries to justify it by saying he cares. Ignorance is a poor defense against the onslaught of a cruel world, you know. Now I'm going to be charitable and say that Steven was trying to calm down the people any way he could. But it does sort of bug me that Steven is being more of an adult in this situation than the actual adults. Number four, keep Beach City weird. This episode may be the biggest failure in terms of Steven Universe's world building and mythology in season one. Basically, Ronaldo, who's a terrible paranormal investigator, thinks that all the magical stuff the Crystal Gems actually do was perpetrated by the Snake People. This episode raises a lot of questions about the Crystal Gems and their place in the world. If the activities of Amethyst, Garnet, Pearl, and Steven are general knowledge, then Ronaldo's being completely crazy. Although it does raise the question of why doesn't he just project all of his conspiracy-ness onto them? Although on the other hand, if the Crystal Gems are largely unknown, then Ronaldo is living Agent Mulder's wildest dream. He's hit the motherload of alien supernatural activity, and it's within convenient walking distance. Then, at the end of the episode, he falls into a major depression and has a complete freakout. And his family and friends decide that he's happier with his bizarre delusion. Well, he is more entertaining as a raving lunatic. And finally, he starts shouting about polymorphic sentient rocks controlling the government. And he may just have spoiled where the show's plot is going. Number three, Steven and the Stevens. Steven Universe has an odd obsession with killing poor little Steven. And rather than parcel it out, they seem to have decided to get it all out of the way at once. The story of the episode goes, in an undersea temple, Steven finds Hermione's Time Turner. He uses it to find duplicates of himself to start a band. The power to reshape history in the palm of his hand, and that's how he uses it. Well, he makes a big enough mess just using it for concert planning. He goes mad with power and ends up destroying all the alternate versions of himself. I'd say my biggest problem with the episode is how badly Steven is characterized. 
He just jumps at the chance to go crazier than a soup sandwich. This feels like something that would happen to Cartman or Bart during one of the Halloween specials. Not Steven. The one bright spot in the episode is that it ends on a fun song featuring Steven and the Crystal Gems. If only every time travel story could end with a concert on the beach. Private, do you really think Terminator 2 should have ended with a musical number? Well, now you mention it. Never mind. Number 2. Rose's Scabbard. This one gets the distinction of being crowned most disappointing. It could have been good. Hell, it could have been great. It's a strong character-focused episode that deals with the show's backstory, and it's leagues better than anything else on this list. But it can't not be number two, because of the nasty implications it raises about Pearl and Steven's relationship, and a near betrayal level of mischaracterization of Pearl. In the episode, Lion finds Rose's scabbard, and it opens up a whole can of worms for Pearl about how much her friend really cared about her. First off, Pearl and Steven. Pearl loved Rose Quartz. I think the exact nature of that connection is open to a certain amount of interpretation, but it was still a very strong emotional bond. And Steven, as Rose's child, is also loved by Pearl. But apparently not for who he is. The way this episode comes off, Steven is loved as an extension of Rose, not a thing unto himself. Ah, dear sweet misdirected love. If not for that, how would psychiatrists ever stay in business? And we've seen on numerous occasions that Pearl knows that Steven is his own person and loves him in his own way. Now for that betrayal moment. There's a scene when Steven is chasing Pearl up a set of floating platforms. And he doesn't clear the final jump. Pearl sees him fall and barely manage to hang onto a vine for dear life. And she just sits there, totally caught up in her own <laughs> Well, he just climbs up on his own. Now, Pearl can be nitpicking, patronizing, condescending, and egotistical, but at no time in the show have we ever seen her as indifferent to seeing Steven in danger. Alright, the number one worst episode in Steven Universe Season 1 is... Finger Cats. What the... Man, what the... Okay, so Steven is trying to shapeshift like Amethyst. But instead of transforming his whole body, he turns the end of his finger into a tiny cat head. And then completely loses control and transforms his entire body into a blob-like thing, but made of cats. Do they set him on fire? What? No. The opposite. Water is the cure in this case. But that's not the point. This is just a gonzo episode. It serves no point in the overall season, and it's just kinda sorta gross. The only good thing I can say about it is that the animation is interesting. Steven's really dumb, and they never deal with the idea of shape-shifting again. But maybe that's a good thing. Well, this has been my top 10 worst episodes of Steven Universe in Season 1. Now be sure and come back next time for my top 11 best Steven Universe episodes of Season 1. And if you're interested in more reviews of anime, movies, TV shows, comic books, and video games, check out my channel on YouTube at StupidPrivate913. Or find my Facebook and DeviantArt pages for video updates and more. Thank you for watching. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private!